What is up, crypto traders and investors? It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the pursuit of wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, and interviews. It's Thursday, May 18th. Hope you're well. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Ledger's new feature called Ledger Recover. There's a huge amount of controversy going around, so I'm going to explain this and then give my thoughts and opinions. But essentially, we're going to discuss today whether uh, to Ledger or not to Ledger. And again, I'll give my thoughts and opinions here in just a moment. Before we get to it, though, make sure to smash the like, help support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe, click the bell, you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. Just as a heads up, I am approaching half a million views on the channel. So thank you very much, first and foremost, to the community. This is no easy feat and I uh, really appreciate it, feeling, feeling very grateful and couldn't do it without all of you. So I love each and every one of you uh, for your support. And also just as a reminder, I did post some videos. I did one earlier today. This is my second video today, but I did a video on the SPY ETF, so the S&P 500 ETF. It's targeting $439. There's some massively bullish signals there that are flashing. I highly encourage you to check that out. Also did an XRP video and my targets for that and uh, just an update. They also just launched a new platform for CBDCs. So this is going to be massive, in my opinion, uh, into the end of the year here for crypto. Also did some news on Quadriga CX. There's big news. Former users are going to get 13% of their claims back, uh, better than nothing. Uh, you can check that out. And also a video on Binance leaving Canada and now what? So I give some options in there for exchanges. And if you go to my Power Group YouTube channel, click on the About tab and then go down here, you'll see all these different options. So Uphold is my favorite exchange and an exchange that supports XRP and Flare. So you can buy XRP and Flare directly on Uphold. I recommend uh, Ledger Nano as well, the hardware wallet. Uh, but again, there's a lot of controversy going on right now. Uh, but again, I don't think it's anything to worry about. I'll give my thoughts and opinions here but over, after we explain everything that's going on. Uh, but I also use ShakePay. So I use ShakePay to fund it. I send e-transfers from my bank account to ShakePay via e-transfer. Then I'll transfer from ShakePay, usually Bitcoin. I'll move Bitcoin or Ethereum. That's the only two crypto. That's the downfall of ShakePay. That's the only two cryptos on there. So I'll either move Bitcoin or Ethereum to Uphold and then I'll buy whatever altcoin like XRP on Uphold and then I'll transfer from Uphold to my Ledger Nano hardware wallet because as you know, not your keys, not your crypto. But there's a lot of controversy going around after Ledger just uh, introduced a new feature called Ledger Recover and the new Ledger Crypto Wallet under fire, Ledger Crypto Wallet under fire over seed phrase recovery service. A new update to the crypto wallet provider Ledger lets users link their seed phrase to their passport or identity card, but should they? And again, this is... Uh, Ledger Recover service that they just released in their latest firmware update. Um, and then there was some, again, some backlash from the community basically saying, oh, I thought there was no backdoor. I thought you didn't have access to my private keys. I thought I was the only one who had access to the keys. Well, we still do have access to the seed recovery phrase, right? Like you have access to your words, your, your seed phrase, but they might also, and this is kind of something that I always speculated and assumed and just naturally figured anyway. How do, how do we really know, <laughs> unless you're going to reverse engineer this this thing, and then in order to do that, you'd need to know how, you know, to, you need to be a computer engineer, right? You need to have the know-how and the wherewithal to do all of that. But realistically, at the end of the day, how do we know Ledger or Trezor or any of these other hardware wallets? How do we really know? Like, unless you're going to completely dissect this thing, reverse engineer it, and then, you know, spend hours and hours, if not months and months, uh, and then the amount of knowledge that it would take to reverse engineer such a thing, you know, how do we really know? Does anybody really know? Or are we just taking their word for it? I think we're just taking their word for it, right? Um, I, again, let me know what you think in the comments below, but this is just my opinion. And Ledger was founded in 2014 by eight experts with complementary backgrounds in embedded security, cryptocurrency, entrepreneurship. Their history goes on there. But, you know, it, it, it's been since 2014, there hasn't been any news of them you know, doing anything malicious or, you know, any kind of attacks on private keys or private keys getting leaked or anything like that. So I don't think there's really anything to worry about. I think this is this and this isn't a new thing, right? There's talks of people giving their, their part of their seed phrase to different family members and things like that, like give, you know, so many X amount of words to this one, X amount of words to this person and X amount of words to that one. So that if anybody ever did try to come over and rob you of your seed phrase, you'd only have a certain piece of it, right? Uh, so there's, they're just trying to cater to a different, you know, they're just trying to create a new service and add revenue to their company. Um, but again, it's been in existence for almost 10 years now and there hasn't been any nefarious activity or anything leaked or anything like that. So I highly doubt it's anything to worry about. Um, but again, how do we really know? Like, unless you're di dissecting every little part of the OS and, and the hardware and, you know, the encryption and uh, like, you're basically just taking their word for it, right? And there's different competitors and things like that that are opening their 
firmware and things like that to open source, which is allowing transparency, which is a good thing. But Ledger did clarify how its firmware works after the deleted tweet controversy. But before we get to this, before I forget, you know, this let this be a reminder that if you're using Ledger or you're using a, a centralized exchange like Uphold, keep in mind that you or Binance or FTX, for example, right, or Celsius or Voyager or Quadriga, those companies went belly up, right? Quadriga, FTX, Voyager, Celsius, and people lost you know, their money, right? And that's because they controlled the private keys and you did not, right? So you can't actually access the private keys. Whereas with Ledger, you're given the keys, but you know, can they access it as well? Maybe, you know, we're not 100% sure. Um, but you know, as long as you have access to the keys, that's the main thing. And then with, you know, money being on Binance or Uphold or something like that, you physically can't get those keys, right? They, they have it and they won't give it to you, right? So not your keys, not your crypto. It's still your crypto because you have the key, but you know, there's some controversy, like I said, at the end of the day, the best thing we can do is mitigate risk. So how do we mitigate risk? You could have multiple hardware wallets, right? Don't put all of your crypto on one Ledger Nano device, right? Don't put all of your crypto on one Ledger, buy a Trezor, buy another hardware wallet, right? And disperse your funds in multiple different hardware wallets. And you're like, oh, well, then I got to spend another hundred dollars or a couple hundred dollars to buy another Ledger or another Trezor. It's like, yeah, but that's the price you pay to prevent you know, total loss, right? So again, just not having everything, all your eggs in one basket and mitigating risk, preparing for the inevitable uh, possibility of, you know, a day of reckoning or, you know, some sort of hack or you never know, right? This happened, it's not just in cryptocurrencies, this happens in the regular banking sector, this happens in any industry, there's scammers, there's good and bad people everywhere, right? So just let this be known that, you know, you shouldn't have every, so what's the solution? Not having everything on one on one hardware wallet because if you have multiple hardware wallets you have multiple seed phrases what are the chances that you know a hacker or somebody's going to hack every single one of your large your, your hardware uh recovery phrases right so that's pretty much you know a virtual certainty that's never going to happen could one potentially get hacked maybe but are they going to do all three or four of your hardware wallets probably not right so again it's just mitigating risk but ledger did clarify how its firmware works after a deleted tweet controversy developers say third-party apps can't access ledger's users keys without the device owner's consent. So on May 18th, crypto hardware wallet provider Ledger clarified how its firmware works after a controversial May 17th tweet was deleted by the company. The deleted tweet, which Ledger said was written by a customer support agent had stated that it was possible for Ledger to write firmware that could extract users private keys. Ledger chief technology officer, Charles Guillaume, clarified in a new Twitter thread that the wallet's operating system OS requires the consent of the user anytime a private key is touched by the OS. In other words, the OS shouldn't be able to copy the device's private key without the user's consent. Though Guillaume also said that the using a ledger does not require does require a minimal amount of trust. So again, we're basically just taking their word for it. At the end of the day, you know, could this happen? I would think so, right? I always just figured that, you know, as long as they're good stewards, as long as they're trustworthy, as long as they're not, you know, there's nothing nefarious going on. We haven't heard anything since 2024, uh, 2014 when the company was in inception, right? The inception of the company. We haven't heard anything since. So it's been almost a decade and there's been no, you know, examples or uh, any kind of uh, nefarious activities going on or any kind of information about things getting leaked. I, I don't think we have anything to worry about. Um, and again, then if you're really that paranoid, you can try a different, you know, Trezor, you can try a different hardware wallet altogether, or you can use the Zum wallet, or, you know, you can, there's tens of things you can do, buy another hardware wallet and maybe even a few, and then disperse them into a few different hardware wallets, right, to mitigate that risk. But the tweet ignited a firestorm of controversy on Twitter, no doubt, as many users accused the company of misrepresenting the security of its wallet. Critics shared an alleged uh, ledger post from November that stated a firmware update cannot extract the private keys from the secure element, implying that the company contradicted itself. Though the deleted tweet fueled the controversy, the matter first sparked on May 16th when the company unveiled a new ledger recover service that allows users to back up their secret recovery phrase by splitting it into three shards and sending it to different data custody services. The deleted tweet was in response to the release of the new feature. So again, I'll, I'm not going to go through this whole thing in, a, in entirety, but uh, if you do want to read it, I highly encourage you to go check it out. It's from Cointelegraph here. But, you know, at the end of the day, we have to just remember that there's going to be there's going to be risk in any asset class, right? And especially crypto, it's definitely one of the higher risks ones, if not the highest risk. So 
the, at the end of the day, you know, we're just taking these companies' word for it. Unless we reverse edge engineer it, you know, and, and really have the wherewithal to do so, uh, we're basically just taking their word for it. And this goes for any hardware wallet. So again, just make sure you have your funds dispersed into multiple wallets. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I always love hearing from you. It's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Both. Hopefully, you, hopefully you found value in this video today. If you did, smash the like, share it, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.